Hello, my name is Lane Venardos, and I make buildings that I sell on eBay. Not a lot of buildings. It's not a livelihood, it's a hobby. Most of them are background buildings, the front or back of a structure that uh, can be used against a backdrop or some place where the back is not going to be seen so that the depth of the building is very thin in most cases. Here are some pictures of buildings I've made and sold on eBay. I guess I'm up to a, a few hundred by now, and I enjoy making them, and I thought I would share what little expertise I have with you on how these structures come to be. For this project, I've picked out this one from the stack in the back. It's a design preservation model, Schultz's Garage. I've done, well, several dozen of these, and uh, I like them because they're fun, and they can be as interesting and diverse as the materials used to make them. So let's get started. Well, this is my work area. It's about uh, two feet by four feet. It's a table, uh, actually a folding table, that I put brown paper on the top so that I don't get the table dirty when I'm using paints and glues. And behind are little cabinets that have little bitsy parts and detail parts that I use in making each kit, each building, uh, distinctive and individual. My tools are right over here and they're handy. That's really important to me. This little stand I bought at an Ace Hardware store. It was uh, on sale and has just enough drawer space to keep things that I use frequently in easy reach. So we'll open up the kit and make sure all of the parts that the nice people at Design Pres Preservation Models have put in here are in fact here. Here's the acetate for the glass, the acetate for the or the styrene for the roof, a bunch of instructions, most of which we don't need, and the individual kit parts including a tiny chimney. I saved the bags because I can use them as a place upon which to paint later on. The pieces of the model are just these four walls and we'll need to cut off the extra plastic that's part of all of these kits so that uh, things are smooth. And we'll do some sanding and filing as well on the ends where the ends meet. Now the end of this one you see still has the brick texture and it will go against this. But this, because of the way it comes out of the mold, has an angle of the end. It's sort of like that and we need to have that filed down so that it is exactly 90 degrees and not whatever the degrees are there. One of the things I use a lot are these Xuron cutters. They're designed to cut all kinds of things and they're designed to cut it flush. So I'll make the first cut with these and take off that extra styrene that's on here now I have a set of files, several files, here on the roundabout thing, and I only use them for either plastic or metal. A file doesn't get used for both, because if it's uh, used for both, metal filings will get into the plastic. It's kind of an annoying sound, I'm sorry. And uh, could damage plastic. So this is only used on plastic, this particular file. I'm taking off excess with my X-Acto knife, a new blade for every new project. Go through a lot of these X-Acto blades, but to use a dull blade is to invite trouble. And because of the way these kits are made, there are these holes you see here in the plastic where they were part of a mold. And uh, this particular part, right there and right there, will be clearly visible on the finished model. So, I'm going to take Squadron White Putty. They also make a green. This stuff is absolutely invaluable. And I'm just going to take a small amount as soon as I get it squeezed up in the tube here. It doesn't take much to fill these little holes. And 
in a little while this dries very quickly and it's highly flammable so you don't want to be messing around with flames when you're dealing with this squadron putty. Uh, then I'll sand this down so that the surface is perfectly smooth and these holes will have disappeared. The stuff also dries very quickly so you don't want to leave it with the cap off. And now we're making it because we're making a background building we're going to decide how thick the front and the back are and helping us decide that is the position of these windows and doors because you don't want to have a window or a door be in the middle of the cut that determines the size of the front and the back. So these are pretty typical and we'll put them like this so I can see where things are. So I think the cuts will be made right here because that's sort of halfway down and it goes between these windows on both sides. Okay, now using this cutting board which is a very handy thing to have and as must be obvious this one has gotten a lot of use over the years and is on the verge of being replaced. We'll now align this with uh, one of these square lines on the grid and then using a fine sharpie make a line on here that'll be our cutting mark and for the cutting we'll use this razor saw very sharp and quick this is perhaps the most important single part of the process of making this building is having is deciding where the cuts will go and making sure that they are perfectly square. Once there's a groove in here, I don't need the straight edge anymore. And I'm applying considerable pressure to this saw. So there it is, and it's been cut I guess about halfway through and because it's styrene we'll b break it just like that. Then we'll take a sanding block of which I keep several different size grits handy. This is a medium on these cuts that will be at the back of the halves of this building. Now these holes, these little molding holes, uh, are in places where they won't be seen easily, but they will be able to be seen for anybody who looks inside this model. So we'll do the same thing with these that we did with the uh, ones that will be seen. We'll try to get these down as low as possible in terms of the parts that's sticking up and we'll use some more of the squadron white putty to fill in the holes so that anybody who's really paying attention to what's inside here will uh, not see holes. So now we need to identify how this is going to go together. So somewhat arbitrarily we'll call this the back and this the front and I'm making my little notations here on the reverse of the good side and we'll also designate what goes where 
and we'll use the fact that these things have okay that will go there and this will go here so here's the front and we'll call this again somewhat arbitrarily a and this side b and we'll letter these sides as well so we know where things go when we start putting this together so here's the back and here is again arbitrarily C and D we've moved to the workshop this is the real workshop not the train workshop and here we'll use this uh, large but sturdy vise to do what needs to be done to smooth these edges and to do the filing I'm using this 8 inch bastard file uh, that I only use for plastic once again and I put them in the vise trying to keep from squishing it too much and now just a little filing will bring this edge square with the sides and we're going to do that for the edges the front edges on all of those pieces well here comes the fun part the gluing part and for the gluing I use a liquid plastic cement in this case it's model master I like this brand because it has this easy to apply little spout that makes it uh, very easy to apply exactly the right amount of glue precisely where it's needed and we're gonna run a bead of this glue right down the edge of this not much and we're gonna run a bead down the edge where it's going to be glued to and we're just going to let that set for, I don't know, 15 seconds or so. That softens up this plastic, which is already pretty soft, just enough that when you put them together, they really stick. So here we go. The sides are together. And we'll use the grid on this cutting sheet to align them so that they are more or less square and now we're going to do that with the other side here we're not using much glue that is really important because uh, too much glue makes for a real mess in most cases I'm just holding it together for a few seconds while it sets up a little bit and then and I think this is an important step as well in order to make sure that the sides are right where they're supposed to be I pay a lot of attention to that right now because if you don't get it square now it's not going to be square ever square and the sides pretty even